Hey guys, Brian from Filmatic AI, and I'm so happy to finally show you guys Color Clone, our camera matching plugin for DaVinci Resolve. We're gonna show you in real time how fast it can work and how accurate your results can get. I hope to show you its functions, its features, tips and tricks you can do with it. Let's just get straight to it. So we're in DaVinci Resolve now. I just set up the timeline with the footage, so, you know, I'm really not holding anything back. We're gonna really check it out in, in real time. With our first scenario, we're gonna actually just do probably three of the most different cameras on the market and see what we can do with it, right? So we have our iPhone 15 Pro. Let me just go down to Color Clone. And all you do is you just apply Color Clone. Just drop it in right there. You select your source camera, which in this case is the Apple 15 Pro. The light spectrum, which is different from the white balance because this is the actual light spectrum wavelengths that are hitting the sensor. And in this case, we're doing daylight. So 5600 Kelvin would be daylight. And now our target, we're actually just gonna apply it to itself. So Apple Log to 709. This is what Apple Log to 709 looks like. This is just straight out of the iPhone, right? And then we'll do the same to the Alexa. This is the Ari Alexa 35, white spectrum, Ari Alexa 35. And this is what the Alexa 35 looks straight out of the camera with the Ari Log C4 709 LUT. And then now this is 250D, 35 millimeter film, our source. 250D, we're gonna do our target, which is to itself. This is Cineon Log, and we have to apply, again, a log to 709 LUT. So this is how radically different these three cameras really look like. And we're gonna see if they could all match to film. We'll do the iPhone first, okay. Now our target, Kodak 250D, Cineon Log, and then we'll do 709. And already that's pretty close, but we did have to add a fine tune just because the sensors of each manufacturer are different. So my iPhone, could actually be a different color than yours. And there's no way of us really to control that except to add this slight tint feature. Because again, if you have 10 different iPhones shoot the same thing, they'll all slightly differ just because the manufacturing tolerances. So this is a little magenta. I don't know, maybe yours is a little green, but we'll just add a tweak of green to it. And then we'll just normalize the contrast. And there we go. That's all it takes. So now let's go to the Alexa. Kodak 250D, and then Rec 709. This is a touch warm, right? So we'll add a little magenta. I guess I'll pull the gamma down. It's pretty close already. These were also taken at three different times of the day. There was maybe like 15 minutes between the shots. So it was pretty quick to match all these three to 250D film. So let's take it another step. Let's have these four different cameras and we're gonna all try to match it to the Alexa 35. All I've done is just apply the correction to itself so we're not looking in log, right? I guess Komodo's up first. We're gonna match it to the Alexa 35. And one thing to point out is look at the practical here. It has a slight yellow hue because that's how the RED camera takes this particular LED as a little yellow. But we're gonna show how our algorithm actually accounts for that. So here, boom. And you can see that's already corrected within how the Alexa 35 would see it. This is the Sony FX3 and Alexa 35. Okay, that's pretty close. You know, we'll tweak, I guess, exposure a bit because all these cameras still have a dynamic range. We can't change that yet. And then Sony Venice 2 to Ari Alexa 35. And again, we just have to make a tweak adjustment of contrast and exposure. This is all about just how fast, how easy, and how accurate this is. Of course, I could spend a little bit more time to perfect it, but imagine I told you, okay, now actually I changed my mind. I want these all to look like the Sony Venice 2. Let's actually do it, right? So here, we're gonna match everything to the Venice 2 and S-Log3 709. A little bit underexposed, but that's okay. So again, Sony Venice 2 709 and Sony Venice 2 to 709. So here we go. Sony Venice 2 709. And tonally, just look at the colors. It's pretty close. So now let's take it another step. Let's look at film again. Honestly, we purposely exposed this one because a lot of people ask, okay, well, what about underexposure? Even when we correct it with different levels of exposure, it still has a similar match. So we're gonna correct our 5 new T, which is on the top left, just kind of normalize the exposure, right? That's it, nothing else. The only thing I'm doing is applying Cineon Log because that's what you would get from the scan and applying the Cineon Log to 709. The FX3 is up, let's go. Kodak 500T, Cineon Log. Now we're gonna go 709 to itself and tweak exposure. 
Next, what camera is this? This is the Alexa 35. We're gonna go Kodak 500T, 250D to itself. And again, this is real 35 millimeter film. That's pretty good. Now, what is up? Black Magic. So we're gonna apply Kodak 250D to itself. A Little bit underexposed, like I said. Okay, now let's correct exposure. And there we go. But really, this is what I'm trying to show you guys, is that functionally, these cameras all can look very close to each other with a very strong mathematical transform, which is what we've created. It's truly how film renders these colors. So now let's do something a little more interesting. It's popular to use a workflow such as the Color Space Transform to apply DaVinci Resolve's film look. You know, their Kodak 2383 print stock is a very popular workflow. And I'm going to show you guys how it actually works with Color Clone as well. What if I want to make the Komodo have the main look, right? So let's select the Komodo. We'll apply Color Clone. We actually don't need to do this step, but I want to show you guys the 709 look, right? Okay, but now what if I want to apply DaVinci Resolve's 2383 Kodak film stock look to it? And again, the popular workflow is you would use the color space transform. So we're not going to use color clone on this one, but we'll use it on the other cameras to get them to the Komodo and show how powerful it is to actually convert the footage of a Panasonic to a red. So input color would be red, gamut 4, input color space, red log 3G10. Output color space, this is Rec 709 because we're working in a Rec 709 color space. And output gamma, we are going to select Cineon Log. So now we'll apply the popular Kodak film look, Rec 709 2383. And this is a D65 monitor, so we'll select that. So this is the color space transform. And then now what we're going to do is we're going to do a conversion with Color Clone to convert the Panasonic, the Sony FX3, and the iPhone and treat it as if it were red footage. I'm just gonna copy and paste these two corrections. I'll grab the still. And then now, our Panasonic, we're gonna convert it to red log 3G10. So it's literally treating it as if it were red footage. And then now I'm gonna add these. I'm just gonna append to node graph and boom, that's it. Sure, we could adjust the tint just a touch because my red, maybe it's a little bit more magenta. So I'm gonna just add a tweak of magenta and maybe a little coolness. This is, oh, our iPhone. Just for fun, we're gonna apply iPhone and then now we're gonna convert it into essentially red log 3G10. And then again, append this same exact thing. That's pretty close. I don't even know what I would correct, honestly. The Sony FX30, again, our source camera, Sony FX30. 5600 and we're going to treat it again as if it were literally red footage and I'll append to node graph and I can show you that again in this color space transform we're using all the same settings as the red so it's literally converting the colors or the color space of an iPhone Sony or even Panasonic to red color space and really the point of this demo is not about perfection because you can always spend as much time as you want, but I really wanted to show how quickly it is to get everything all in the same general ballpark so that you can get straight to the creative part, which is the color grading. So now let's do one more scene. Our source camera is the Sony FX3. And for fun, again, why don't we go to a film look? So we'll go Kodak 250D, Cineon Log. Looks pretty warm because that's actually the cast you get straight out of the scanner from Photochem which is where we scan, and you know, I'll just tweak this tint a little bit. So now this is literally a film look, and then I'm gonna copy and paste this exact one to here. So I'm just gonna paste that, except now our source camera's Canon C300 Mark III. Already that's pretty close. Again, I copy and paste it, didn't even do any fine tuning. Red, we'll do the same. The only difference I'm gonna make is that we are shooting with a Komodo now. And then Alexa, copy and paste. Now Alexa Mini, 5600K, that's pretty close, so. In closing, we just wanted to really show how powerful this tool is and how quickly it can really speed up your workflow. We're so excited to get it out in the world. 
get your feedback, and honestly, it's only gonna get better from here. We already have plans to add a lot more cameras to our plugin. There has been requests for a lot of DJI drones, specialty cameras such as GoPro and Insta360, so be on the lookout for that in the future. Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed this demonstration and video. If you have any questions, please reach out and drop a comment if you wanna see additional workflows, because we really wanna see how you will actually use it. So, thank you.